Welcome to the last part of the tutorial. In the second one before, we've produced uh, the predictions of Slangbosch occurrence on our study site for three different years. In this part, we will um, visualize this data uh, using QGIS and R. First, we start in QGIS. That's actually what I recommend to look on the data before, um, before using them. That's a data stack, which is really huge, containing all the data from um, the first, the first um, date to um, uh, containing uh, VH and Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 data likewise. In red, we see the, uh, the training sets we've defined. And now we import the model results into QGIS, going back to R. We import two packages. This is now really slim because we only want to visualize using ggplot inside the tidyverse and using Terra for raster imports. This line is for setting up a ggplot theme that is really clean, but you can choose any you want or keep it as default. Here we again query for the prediction uh, for, the date, for the data on the disk that we import in this statement. So now again we have three, a list of three SPAT raster files containing the predictions we, we've exported in the last script. Now we extract only the third layer in that. We can see it has three layers. The probability of false, the probability of true, and the response. The first two are float variables, meaning that it has data from 0 to 1, but all the steps in between and the response only is true and false. At, for, uh, at first, we are only interested in the actual response in the binary prediction. We give these the three. Um, the three rasters names of the years and we plot them. This exactly resembles the plotting from the last script containing the, the response variables. And in this line we save these response variables to the disk. We can now change to QGIS and load this data. I have it already in this environment but you can use the Slangbosch base map that's also provided on GitHub uh, for convenience. There are already all the layers inside. Otherwise, you can just go inside the your your college Slangbosch folder, go into data results, and that's everything uh, we will learn to in this script. Opening now the response uh, GeoTIFF, we at first see nothing, but if we change the visualization to just simple grayscale. We have three layers, 2015, 16, and, eight, and 15, 16, 17, containing exactly what we've seen in R. And we get back to R. It makes us some, sometimes uh, troublesome if we have uh, temporal changes, temporal data um, that to visualize in just one map. That's why when we have three time steps, it's really easy to create something like indices um, for each uh, time so that we can visualize it um, by using uh, categories for each year. At first, uh, the first year we keep as it is. It, it contains a one for a true Slumbosh response and a zero for a negative. We multiply the second layer with 10 so that a positive Slangbosch occurrence is 10 and a negative zero, and the last one times 100. That creates um, certain indices for each year. Now we add them up. So we have data from zero to 111. So all the combination of years has its own index. And now we switch back to QGIS 
to visualize these indices. What we see now is uh, a background map of the data stack we have. In the far background, there's um, a QGIS base map. On the right-hand side, we see what these indices mean. So zero means that in each year, no slung wash occurred. Um, I've marked that as transparent, so we can see through on our data stack. So a large share of this area never has, um, that was never predicted a slung wash occurrence. Doesn't mean that, that there was no, but our algorithm plus the satellite data we used cannot detect or is only feasible of detecting as slung wash as we see here with the given data and the training sets. Now, the red one means that slung wash only occurred 2015. Uh, these large areas it means after 2015, these areas disappeared. So they've been probably burned. We know from this area that there has been a lot of slungbosch control happening. So we can, it's pretty likely that there has been human intervention to um, get, um, get rid of this slungbosch coverage. Now the orange tones mean 2016 and 2015 to 16. These are transition classes um, where it happened, there was some slungbosch coverage in two years. The green one is only 17, so the last one. This is um, this is visible in the northwest part here and down here, meaning that there has um, been bush bushes growing, um, which is quite uh, interesting that it's so so dynamic, so fast encroaching into these areas that it's only been detected in the last year. And the dark blue areas have been covered by slungbush all the time. Here on the right hand side in blue, we see the training test area we've trained our algorithm on. That's why we have an extreme overfit uh, to slungbush occurrence. That's why it has been here for in 100%. But we have used this area for a reason. As we see on the base map, and there is a huge coverage still in the last year. But now in most recent, uh, there has been slumbush control happening. That's why for new data, mm, we would new, new, need new training sets or algorithm. But for the time we chose, 2015 to 17, this is enough to um, take an area that has been continuously covered with the land cover type uh, we want to detect. Now we get back to R again and map the probabilities. These are encrypted in the second layer. We remember that it contains the probabilities false and true. We only use true and false is just the same, but one minus the true probability. So it's enough to just take one, extract it from each year and give it a name as well. On the right-hand side, we see simple R plots of the probability through all the three years. Now we want to visualize that with ggplot. ggplot is a library included in the tidyverse. It's a, that's the meta package we've loaded in the beginning of the script that um, contains a large library of visualizing data and also maps. That's why we use it here. First, we have to transform our data to a data frame. So also the raster data has to be transformed to a data frame to be um, processable for ggplot. That's what we do here. And then we transform it into the longer format. Uh, you can look it up on the R um, web pages and help pages what this means. Now we can we can use ggplot on that data using geomraster and typing in the x and epsilon coordinates and using fill as the variable for the probability values. On the right hand side we see panels of all three years. Now a little bit screwed because of the size of um, the R editor, but if we Squeeze it like this, 
they are actual um, rectangle maps. Now we want to export the three maps to the disk so we can um, use um, any photo or uh, visualization software around using PNG. First, we split all the data per year, so we uh, only plot each year. Now using again map to iterate over the three years. And we print the three maps we've already seen. Now with this arrow, you can go back and see all three maps. Using ggsave, we can take these maps and write them uh, onto the disk. The maps uh, we have exported here were used on the web page to create uh, a short animation of the three years. You can do this uh, in R as well, um, but a simple GIF maker in on in the web um, also makes makes does the job for that. Looking into that map, we see um, huge differences per year and changing areas where slumbush has occurred or disappeared. And that's pretty similar to what we've already seen in the indices, but now it's a bit more dynamic. We see the that this area is really sprawling in 16 and 17, and the middle area is being uh, cut down or controlled um, much more. But we, we can have an idea of the fast expansion of this invasive species into these formerly agriculturally used areas or for rain, used for rangelands and, and, and um, livestock breeding. Thank you.